love to invite you again in another uh, event for a longer uh, talk. And now we have Silvia Carrasco about physical gold investment made easy, made easy. And we will see how APIs are enabling this. She is the CEO at Goldex. And uh, every time people say, yeah, it's great, a tech conference that doesn't talk about Bitcoin, but talk about gold. Hello, <laughs> Sylvia. How are you? Hi, Mehdi. Very well. And you? Uh, we're doing really well. So you're based in UK. You work with gold and APIs. Love to hear the story. The stage is yours for 20 minutes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm not in Spain. I'm in, I'm in Spain. Uh, sorry, I'm not in the UK. I'm in Spain at the moment uh, uh, in the place where do we see this picture. Uh, so this is uh, two minutes away from me, which is uh, pretty nice. But Goldex uh, is is a is is a UK company, right? If I'm explaining yeah. UK, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So so basically, just a, a, a super short background about me. Uh, I am Spanish. Uh, I've lived in London for 30 years. I've developed all my career in in banking, in investment banks. Um, I guess I'm very old, so I was one of the founders uh, of the FIX protocol, uh, which is the language used by financial uh, uh, companies to to talk to each other, anything to do with uh, with finance, uh, messaging, trading, uh, trading systems. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I was one of the original members of Credit Suisse uh, Electronic Trading uh, for Equities. So, so I've seen the entire um uh you know change from picking up the phone to buy some shares to we developed the uh, you know of course the industry we got together and put the fixed protocol as the first step to communicate to each other uh from that uh we started each bank we were developing our own products um as i said what we just call direct market access just uh give the the, the client a GUI uh for them to enter the trades then we moved, uh, the, the industry moved into, now you can use Bloomberg to send your trades or, you know, the vendors started appearing like trading screen, Fidesa, et cetera. Um, from that, we, uh, um, you know, the algorithmic, uh, the first algos uh, uh, were developed. I can say that the first algos were developed by Credit Suisse. Uh, that is one of the medals that we have. I always say to my co-founder who, was doing the same job at UBS, I always say, well, as much as it pains you, you you know, Credit Suisse goes always ahead of anybody else. And he said, yes, as much as it pains me, it's true. Um, anyway, the, the, so I've seen the entire industry changing. Um, now, about five, six years ago, uh, I wanted to buy uh, uh, some gold for my personal investment, you know, my personal uh, wealth. Uh, and, and it was interesting because, because I thought, wow, where, where have these people been? Uh, the last 20 years of my life, you know, do I have to pick up the phone? Uh, why? You know, what, uh, what about best execution? You know, what about liquidity? How you guard your dealing with liquidity? Of course, physical gold being OTC, uh, but nevertheless, uh, you know, uh, I saw too many issues. So I contacted some of my, all my, of my old friends, my uh, 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 co-founder who was a UBS competitor uh, at the time, I call my old boss at Credit Suisse, the, the, the genius man who invented really, you know, he's pretty much the uh, the Pope when it comes to electronic trading. And he said, funny you call me, Sylvia, I've just retired. I'm trying to buy gold for my own personal uh, pension and it's a nightmare. Anyway, so that's how we started uh, Goldex. So what we have done is, as far as I know, uh, we are the only API in physical gold um, offering the, the 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 stuff that we offer and i will go into uh into a little bit more detail the presentation is not going to be so much of a technical presentation uh how to monetize etc which the the previous speaker was fantastic um this is more about uh obviously finding an opportunity seeing that there is an industry that uh, uh that you think that needs uh, a disruption and and that's effectively you know what we are doing um, the actual uh, uh, idea, when I speak to my previous colleagues uh, from the equities world, and I tell them what we are doing, they look at me and they say, is that revolutionary? We've been doing that for 20 years, Sylvia. And I said, I know, but you know, in gold, they haven't. Uh, we're just mimicking, replicating uh, what uh, what we've been doing for 20 years in another space, you know, but it takes 
20 years for somebody to realize that they need this. So um, I can go ahead with a presentation. I will try to be short and sweet. Um, there you are. So can you go full screen? Yeah, you... absolutely. And, and it's a fantastic story about like how maybe one of the most known assets in the world um, he's being appified now thanks to Goldex. Uh, I think it's a great story. I'll let you the stage for the next 15 minutes and we will be back for questions. Brilliant. Thank you. So uh, obviously, you know, the title says it all. How, how can we use APIs or an API to, uh, to basically disrupt, uh, um, at the end of the day, the oldest investment uh, that exists uh, that has been with us for over 4,000 years? So. I'll go a little bit about uh, uh, the gold trading. People usually, when, when I go and I speak to some investors uh, for the company, uh, I'm always mesmerized by the fact that they say that the gold market is very small uh, or who buys gold or, you know, it, it's, it's very niche. And I'm just mesmerized because, because it's actually bigger than any stock exchange uh, 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 volumes wide uh, uh, trading. Uh, uh, trading on a daily basis. So, you know, a few stats here, 40% of high earners have bought gold in the past 12 months, four and a half billion traded daily. And I'm and this is physical gold. When we go, uh, when we talk about gold uh, overall traded, also including derivative gold, uh, we go on the nearly 200 billion pounds a day. Um, so it's definitely not small as some people might might think it is. Um, and then there is a constant increase in gold investment, uh, uh, especially since COVID, uh, because people usually go back to to you know to what is safe, and gold is always a, a safe haven. Uh, by the way, all these stats come from the World Gold Council. Uh, I, it's not just uh, 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 my own. Uh, uh, which numbers that I've published here. So we all know it's the ultimate star of, of wealth. Um, now, what is interesting, and I don't know if you probably don't know, uh, you have no reason to know, but 61% of people trust gold more than fiat currencies. That's a hell of a lot. Um, you know, especially uh, now with all the inflation talks uh, uh, and the status of the economy, etc. Uh, I would imagine that this stat is even larger today than uh, when the World Gold Council published it uh, about a year ago, a year and a half ago. But 48% of these 61% don't trust it. They don't trust the gold industry. They, um, they don't know where to start. And as a consequence, they don't invest, period. So it's phenomenal that people don't trust uh, fiat, but they still, of course, they need to operate in fiat. They would love to go into gold, but they don't because of the lack of knowledge or uh, they don't have trust and that stops them uh, to invest. As I said, don't know, don't trust. So what do they do? You go into Google, how can I buy gold? Where do I buy gold? How to buy gold, etc. cetera. Um, then they find a dealer. Of course, every dealer out there uh, goes out and says, buy gold at the best price, go, you know, we are the cheapest, the better, the whatever, which is statistically impossible because it's not possible that every single one of them is the best or the cheaper. Um, and of course, gold is not regulated, which means there is not a consolidated tape on price. So at the end of the day, it's an OTC business, the same as when you go to Amazon, you can buy the same pair of shoes for 10 different prices. Um, so even what they find this is like, can I trust these guys? Who are they? You know, I don't know who they are. are. Are they, you know, running with my gold? Is it really gold that I'm buying? Where is my gold? You know, a very qu question that I keep uh, being asked all the time. So many people ask me, how do I know my gold is there? And one of the answers I can give them is, and when you buy shares, how do you know they are there? And they looked at me and they said, hmm, that's true. And I said, well, it's the same. But do you trust that you, do, do you receive a certificate? Do you put a certificate of your own 10 Vodafone shares on your bed table? Um, can you touch them? 
no, but with gold, interestingly enough, uh, people are far more cautious uh, and less trustworthy. Everybody buys shares, bonds, whatever it is, they don't need to see them. Uh, but the, the gold industry, by definition, generates quite, quite a lot of mistrust. Um, and then finally, the other problem they have is, am I buying it at the right price? What the hell do I know? I don't know. Is it the right price? Is it the wrong price? And this guy is taking me for a right. Uh, I know that gold, you know, as I said, is OTC. So, so those are the main reasons why, why people really um, uh, uh, don't go into gold, because they don't know. Now, let me now change things to a different side. Fintechs have to become super apps, and they already have user trust. Just a single question, very simple question. I don't know about you. I, I, I have certain apps that I use all the time. Um, I'm going to mention the name. Uh, this is not a television program, so I guess this is not publicity, but um, I use Revolut. Everybody uses Revolut, or everybody I know uses Revolut. I'm in Spain. Uh, I need access to euros all the time. Uh, I also use WISE, by the way. Um, but, you know, I'm constantly using Revolut uh, uh, when I'm here. And you know what? I trust them. I know that every time I want to buy euros, they give me euros. Every time I put a car through a machine, I get money out. So actually, I've come to trust them. Uh, uh, and I think they are great. And, and they are doing me the service that I, that I require. Um, so they all really have something from me, which is my trust. Um, and that is super important because I mentioned to you before how trust is the number one barrier when it comes to gold. So if you're a gold dealer, you really have to overcome trust. But these guys already have it. They have my trust. If I was going to buy cryptos tomorrow and I don't know anything about cryptos, I would probably go to Revolut. Now, are they expensive? Probably, actually, yes, they are. They saying that they are super expensive with gold, but they, they, you know, I know that ultimately, look, I'm not going to buy a million pounds. So really, what I really care about is that if I was buying gold uh, and I didn't know anything or cryptos and I don't know anything about it, I would use Revolut because I trust them and, you know, they'll give me, I will make, probably the gold will be there, right? Um, but that ties with uh, the Revolut again. Go, go think about Revolut, you know. Uh, five years ago, a couple of guys from Credit Suisse, one of my colleagues, Nikolai, uh, uh, leaves, leaves the bank, gets with another guy and set up a company to make sure that you don't have to queue at the post office to buy your travel money. You don't need to go to the travel, to the boot in the airport to exchange your, uh, your effects. And suddenly Revolut starts. But what where they originally, they were just an FX travel card. Think about Revolut today. Um, they offer gold, they offer cryptos, they, you know, they offer so many different uh, products. And one of the products that I hear they are launching uh, is a sort of travel agency, I think. Uh, anyway, why? Because they are super app. They are a super app. When you look at super apps in China, in India, uh, the marketplaces, the huge market, the pay TMs, where they do everything, you know, you can buy gold, flying tickets, whatever it is that you want. Um, and that is how the industry is going. Fintechs are now becoming, they have to become a super app. So long are the days where you are a fintech in a single vertical. Now, you know, these guys compete with everybody else. The banks, the neo banks are now opening wealth because they have to offer cryptos and equities and gold. Uh, the uh, you know, the wealth management, uh, you know, manage your money online, etc. Fintech now has to be offering fintech, uh, you know, banking products. So they are all interconnecting each other. They're all competing. They all need to attract new clients. And clients, we request everything. I want everything. I don't tell me want one app. Uh, or I don't need an app for, a, you know, for every single product. I want a super app. Um, and that is a massive change in the industry that we have seen in the last a uh, year, more or less. Um, so you have the fintech. Uh, they have to come everything and anything. I usually say that maybe not many people buy cherry coke, but they the Sainsbury's needs to put a shelf with cherry coke because some people want it. Um, so the fintechs now are looking into offering gold, and they and then they go out and they say, okay, fine. So how do I do this? And then it's when reality hits them. 
So what's happening in the industry, in the gold industry, is that the quality of the technology from the dealers, I mean, I'm putting there is poor. I could say is pretty much non-existent. Um, I mentioned about FIX. I don't know how many people are listening to this, but uh, some of you or, or quite a lot of you will know about the FIX protocol. I cannot, I do not know of a single dealer who uses the FIX protocol. Not one. I've never found one. Um, that's pretty poor in, in my standard. Uh, so they cannot service the institutional, uh, the institutional, uh, 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 you know, uh, companies. Um, and you know what? Do you know how many of them have APIs? Very, very, very few, because the dealers are mainly concentrating on just a single app to give access to their own retail clients. That's all they have. So these fintech companies, they, they, they cannot really speak to them, to, to these dealers. Then the second issue they have is the liquidity. Um, I am Revolut. I interact with a company. Uh, they give me, they have an API, thank God. I can, I can, I can integrate to them. But then Revolut has 10 million clients and liquidity in gold, you know, issues can happen because it's, it's a real product is, is the, the real bars. And that dealer can actually have problems with, uh, with transportation, with the actual amount of gold that they have or not, et cetera. And we've seen this during COVID. What is Revolut going to do? Rely on a single dealer? And they have 10 million clients behind? That's a massive risk uh, for them. Um, not only they have that problem, they also have a price risk. So you rely on a dealer. The dealer tomorrow morning decides to, you know, put the spreads as big as the, you know, a couple of uh, um, double deckers go through it. And they cannot say what. You rely on them. It's an OTC price. If tomorrow they want to put the spreads and the price is up, so be it. They can do it. Uh, and, and Revolut is stuck. Or whoever is the fintech is stuck. And then operation is a nightmare. Um, you know, uh, goals, you have different denomination of bars. Some dealers will allow you to buy in minimum quantity bars. Uh, others uh, uh, go down to X amount of grams. The majority of them stop at one gram. One gram is around 40, 40 pounds. Uh, so it's quite a lot of money. Um, now, if a client wants to buy 100 pounds, they can only buy it really 90. They cannot buy 100, they can only buy 90. And then more importantly for the fintechs, the majority of dealers operate with either a pre-funding structure uh, or a margin uh, structure. So show me the money. Once you have the money with me, you can, your clients can buy and sell. And that's unworkable uh, for the fintech. Because the fintech, Revolut doesn't know that Sylvia is a client. How much gold is Sylvia going to buy? Maybe I never buy gold. What are they going to do? Put some of my potential margin with a gold dealer? So it's unworkable for them. And that's when reality hits them. So as I said, you know, I come from the Credit Suisse uh, side. My colleague, uh, Fernando, was at uh, UBS and Bloomberg, uh, you know, uh, We've also been uh, one of my other colleague in Google. Um, so, so basically, we created the world's only gold marketplace available by an API. And I will go into the marketplace in a second. Um, so we had to do it again because that's how you operate in equities. We're replicating exactly the same model. So why the world's only gold marketplace? So gold, gold exists actually not a gold dealer. We are, we are, gold, uh, uh, we are a technology platform. We don't buy gold, we don't own gold, we don't have any inventory or anything, and we don't make any money from prices, etc. So what we have done is have multiple dealers who have APIs, uh, and, and it was not easy to find them, and they're scattered all over the world. And we basically tell them that via uh, uh, either a FIX connection that they don't have, we don't have a single dealer through FIX because they don't even know what it is, but through an API, what they are doing is we are requesting prices from them. So we go to dealer one, what's the best, best bid, best offer, best bid, best offer, best bid, best offer. So we are constantly getting the prices from the multiple dealers. Uh, we then take those uh, prices and consolidate a best bid, best offer from all of them. And that uh, through a smart order router, which again is the only one uh, in the industry developed, we take that best bid, best offer from the conjunction of all the dealers. And that's the price we give to our client. 
So our client, again, they connect through FIX or an API, uh, and we are just feeding that best price that we are getting from our network. Uh, and then the user of that fintech company, all they are seeing is, again, I'll say the name of Revolut. They look at Revolut price. Can I, do I want to buy? Yes, no, they click. They don't know who sits behind the, uh, the scenes. Uh, and what we are basically doing is a pre-trade, trade, and post-trade. So pre-trade, we are filling prices. Uh, Trading-wise, we execute at the best price uh, via the smart uh, router, so for best execution uh, to them. And the clients always have the best price in and out, not only when they buy, but also when they sell. Because uh, another interesting uh, uh, thing we had to do was to think, OK, if if we buy gold from dealer one, we should be able not to sell it back to dealer one, but maybe to dealer five. So the dealers are always competing with each other because they want to buy, but they also want to sell. Um, we then, of course, do the execution. So we do the trade bit and then we do the post trade. We don't do, we don't require any margins. We don't require any prefunding. Uh, we settle on T plus two. You know, we do a cut of time. You bought this, you sold this. So either you owe us money or we owe you money. Uh, so, and we of course take care of the uh, vaulting and the insurance uh, uh, and the storage for them. So the interesting thing about this model uh, um, is the multiple dealers. The actual uh, uh, client can actually deal with 16 dealers with a single connection. They have no liquidity problems. The liquidity issues are gone. Uh, we use the smart of the router, which again, in equities or in FX is, is bread and butter. Um, and that means that we are securing the best prices in and out. And then finally, on the, um, uh, on the vaulting side, we just make sure that everything is stored and safely uh, insured uh, for them. So what's good for these fintech companies is that it's a 360 degrees solution that nobody has come up with, that is up and running in six weeks, where we are looking at what I mentioned just now, pre-trade, trade, and post-trade. Um, it's extremely efficient for them to be able to offer a new product to your client uh, uh, and be able to compete uh, with any other fintech who needs to offer own products, especially at uh, wealth these days. So where are we today? Um, we finalized the, uh, uh, the technology back in May. The first two were, is now three uh, uh, partners are integrating. Uh, 16 more companies in the UK uh, are in discussions with us to, uh, 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 to integrate. They are very, very well-known names that obviously I cannot disclose. Um, the estimated user base of those guys is, is more than 30 million. Uh, just one of them is over 10 million. Uh, but I'm trying to be, uh, um, um, you know, a little bit, uh, uh, you know, cautious on the numbers. Uh, by December, we, we should have over 30 parties integrated uh, uh, with, uh, with a big uh, number of users uh, behind. So all this to say that, uh, I don't know how am I, how am I doing uh, for time, but all this to say that, you know, I usually laugh when I said it takes equities people to disrupt the gold market. Um, and it is. That's the case. Um, we are literally replicating something. Uh, we, I don't claim that we are inventing the wheel. The wheel was invented. What I still don't understand is why nobody thought about this. Um, I don't understand that, um, you know, in the in, in, in a technology uh, era as we are, uh, people are disregarding uh, one of the largest uh, investments, uh, vehicles and assets uh, in the world. And, um, and nobody has thought about this. And ultimately, the ones who get benefited are the clients, you know, the ultimate user uh, who can buy, sell, uh, uh, you know, they don't have to be billionaires, millionaires to own gold. They can actually put their money in there, they can protect their wealth, they can even speculate with it uh, as safely and more importantly, uh, with a very easy access uh, to do this. And, yep. and that's what we are facilitating. 
Okay. Yes, Sylvia, we reached reach the time, but uh, just last point on you're actually liberating energy, you know, from all the gold minters who don't have IT or access to all these fintech apps and everything. You enable at least to make the link between the producers and the end users via the different platform and APIs are, are the channel for that. Yes, exactly. And and, and especially for the for our clients, for the who are our clients, fintech companies, but of course, embedded finance companies. The, the the amount of embedded finance companies that are in discussions with us is is you know is quite large because because at the end of the day what they are doing is they have a list of products the fintechs these days I was talking to somebody who's setting up a bank and is going through the application with the bank of you know the regulator in, in uh, because it's a, a regulated uh, bank in in the UK and and I said to him I guess you are not going to be building that technology are you and he said of course not. You want to be building the technology, and these guys are very big. Um, and he said, "No, of course not. I will. I will go through a company, and I will pick what the products that I want." And I said, "What well, a smart choice!" Uh, and that's why these embedded finance companies now, the drive wells, the alpacas uh, of this world, they are being very successful because because you know what? They are the easy access tapping into an easy uh, uh, the fintechs to, to deploy new products, and that's what we are doing with this a specific project uh, at the moment. Thank you very much, Sylvia. We reached the time, but uh, yeah, really glad to have you at EPA as London to show that APIs are uh, can be total enablers of some, you know, uh, legacy industries, uh, but that are that that needs to embrace the digital uh, revolution and new customer habits. Thank you very much, Sylvia. Thank you.